Welcome to a twin tangy engine compilation. Part 1. I rebuilt this old twin tangy steam engine in 2015. A friend of mine has recently bought it at a very good price. I thought I would revisit the rebuild showing some details from the original series and the inevitable transformation. My friend who recently bought this engine is called James Evans. And even though the engine still seems to run OK, I have a feeling that the timing has slipped. All of the clips in this compilation are taken from my series Renovating a Vintage Twin Tangy Type Model Steam Engine. So if you would like to see the entire rebuild in detail, that's the series that you want to search for. There are many edits in the clips in this video. I always thought this was a Bassett Loke engine, but I really am now thinking that it isn't. I think this one came from Reeves. And it could be an Edgar T. Westbury design, but I'm really not sure. If you're watching this and you're 100% certain that you know what it is, please let me know. Let the show begin. The first thing to do is to give it a quick run to check it out. And it seems to run quite well. It's not really in very bad condition, this engine. The only main problem with it is no power. With even very slight pressure on the flywheel, the engine refuses to turn over and you can clearly hear the compressed air blowing past the pistons or maybe the valves, so this will have to be looked into. On screen at the moment I'm having a quick look at the paintwork on the cylinder and as you can see it's coming off very easily just with my fingernail. This will have to be rectified, I'm going to repaint the entire engine anyway. A nice feature of this engine is a very neat water pump in between the two crossheads. And it actually works. To verify this I'm going to connect some silicone rubber tubing into a pot of water and see how it pumps. There is one aspect of the design I'm not too thrilled about and that's the way that the water pump is driven from the same eccentric that drives the valve in the steam chest. When a steam engine is under steam or compressed air the slide valve has been pressed very hard onto the port face and this puts quite a strain on the eccentric and this is compounded by the eccentric driving the water pump as well. Having said all that it seems to work but if I nip the pipe as you see me doing here the first thing that happens is the eccentric's position actually slips around the crankshaft. I've tried this a couple of times before I videoed it so what I'm going to have to do is find a very secure way of mounting the eccentric on the crankshaft. I would have much preferred it if there had been a separate eccentric to drive the water pump, but this is not so. And as this is a sympathetic restoration, I'm not going to fit any extras to it. I'm going to repair this though, this is a lubricator that just falls off. That's no good at all. I'm about to remove one of the cylinder covers so I can get at the pistons because the pistons are definitely blowing. And here I encounter the first problem. Two of the cylinder bolts will not release. I need these to come off so I can remove the cylinder cover and they're just spinning round. It's not a good start but it's very common and nothing to really worry about. So I carry on and I remove all the nuts that come off. Sometimes they come out with the stud, that's not a problem. Now the cylinder cover has been removed, it's time to remove the piston. The piston rod is held into the crosshead with a simple pinch bolt. It seems to do the trick but it's not the way I would do it. But having said that, this is just an ornamental steam engine, it's not designed to do hard work. So I suppose a steel bolt threaded into the crosshead, pressing on a nickel silver piston rod, is more than sufficient to hold the piston to the crosshead. And here's the piston. It's quite usual on engines of this type and this age, to have cotton in the grooves. And this is no good really, it wears far too quickly. I've always used graphite yarn, and in more recent years, silicone rubber. So I'll take out the cotton, and the grooves are very, very shallow anyway. I'm going to machine the piston to take a standard O-ring. The bore of this cylinder is one inch in diameter. And here is the re-groove piston, fitted with a one inch outside diameter silicone O-ring. Normally refitting a piston is a very simple job, but this was difficult, it would not go in. Then I found all the string that was in there, or cotton, it's very fine stuff. And once I pulled this out, the piston rod came through fine. 
I simply replaced it with some proper graphited yarn. I was going to use an o-ring, but I thought, no, I'll be a traditionalist. Mainly because I've got some proper graphited yarn that I unpick from a full-size piece of graphited yarn, and it's really good stuff. A quick tip, as you can see here, on tightening gland nuts. I do not know why people put hexagon nuts for gland nuts in small, inaccessible places, when it's much easier to have a plain gland nut with holes drilled around the outside, so you can put a tommy bar in to turn the gland. Anyway, this one has got hexagon nuts, as you can see, and people normally use a screwdriver to sort of chisel the thing into place. I use a piece of mahogany that does more or less the same job, because I'm not trying to tighten it up too tightly anyway. But it does it without marking the brass. I might make a very fine spanner to tighten these gland nuts, it will be easier. So here, I'm refitting the piston rod to the crosshead, with the pinch bolt as you can see, and then I'm going to refit the cylinder cover temporarily just using three of the nuts and give the engine a run to see how it goes. And even though this is just one side, the result is dramatic, it sounds entirely different, and the engine has much more power. The other cylinder is still blowing of course, as I can clearly hear, so what I'm going to do is repeat the process on the other side. I don't think I'm going to bother re-videoing this part of it, I'll just do it. After repeating the process with the other cylinder, all the nuts were fine on that one thankfully, the engine now has much more power even though the valve timing is still slightly out. I'll put that right later. But it's running quite well, it's a much harder sound and it really has a lot of power now, I would not like to get my fingers in the flywheel or in any of the moving parts, whereas before it had about as much power as a small mammoth. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with small mammoth steam engines, except they are small and they're not very powerful. And that is it for the first episode. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.